Good morning. I will speak on authorship controversies, gift, guest, and ghost authorship. I am Secretary of WAMI, past president of APAMI, charter president of POMGI, and chair of the National Journal Selection Committee for the Western Pacific Region Index Medicus. Apart from these, I have no conflicts of interest to disclose. The reference for this lecture is available online at this site. Authorship controversies are often committed, but seldom discussed. In this session, we will discuss principles of authorship and authorship criteria, gift, guest, and ghost authorship, and the order of authorship and authorship controversies. There are two general principles underlying authorship. First, all persons designated as authors should qualify for authorship. This means that everyone whose name is listed as an author should meet all the authorship criteria. Second, all those who qualify as authors should be so listed. Oftentimes, a postgrad student or resident in training who is no longer connected with an institution when the final manuscript is submitted for publication is left out of the list of authors because he or she is no longer around. That is inappropriate. Each author should have participated sufficiently in the work to take public responsibility for its contents. The recommendations that are made and updated annually by the ICMJE or International Committee of Medical Journal Editors has very specific sections on authorship concerns. Credit for authorship should be based on these criteria established by the ICMJE. First, all authors should have made substantial contributions to the conception and design or acquisition of data or analysis or interpretation and interpretation of data. If there are three of us working on a research and one of us conceived the study and designed it and, one, and the second person acquired the data, and the third person analyzed and interpreted the data. Do all three of us meet the first criterion? Yes, we do. But there are three other criteria that we all have to meet. The second criterion is that all authors should be involved in drafting the article or revising it critically for important intellectual content. This means that Editing a work or copy editing or proofreading it alone do not suffice for meeting the second criterion. If as an editor, I help authors improve the quality of their paper by editing language, this does not mean that I meet the criteria for important intellectual content. Third, all authors should give final approval for the version to be published. Often, a journal will provide galley proofs of the final copy before publication, and it is this copy that all authors have to approve. This will prevent an author from making complaints in the future or saying that he or she does not agree with a certain part of the manuscript. And finally, and the most recent addition to the four criteria, all authors must agree to be accountable for all aspects of the work as far as any accusations of misconduct may be concerned. And this will prevent authors from washing their hands and finger pointing in case uh, there is misconduct that is later on discovered by others. So, authors must meet all four criteria, and these are typically verified in writing 
in the manuscript submission process. Authorship responsibilities. All those named in a list of authors should live up to all these responsibilities. Honorific or gift authorship is unethical if only acknowledgement is due. Because all listed authors are liable for the published work, anonymous or ghost authors cannot be held liable, and therefore this is also improper. Bestowing honorific authorship on a superior, such as a chair, head of department, or director, is called gift authorship. It is usually practiced for political purposes, such as future promotion, and is usually involves the knowledge and consent of the superior. The superior, however, does not meet authorship criteria. And therefore, you have to be aware of how pronouns such as we or I are used in the manuscript as well as in the acknowledgments. Often, the manuscript will use the first person I, and suddenly the acknowledgments will say, I thank my, in this case, co-author of the paper. And you cannot be both an author as well as an acknowledged person. Deceit and fraud in medical research are a serious problem that we must all be concerned with. The most famous case in Britain is perhaps that of Malcolm Pierce, a senior lecturer whose head of department, Geoffrey Cham Chamberlain, was professor when they both published a paper in the British Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology. Incidentally, Pierce was assistant editor of that journal, where Chamberlain was editor. The paper claimed success in reimplanting an ectopic pregnancy. And in the same issue, Pierce had published a randomized controlled trial. A few months later, a whistleblower claimed that the reimplantation case was fictional, and so were the patients in the randomized trial. This scandal led to Chamberlain's resigning and Pierce's being struck off the medical register. Guest authorship refers to including an influential or well-known person among the list of authors. This is often done to boost the prestige of the manuscript or increase its chances of favorable review and publication. Again, it is usually with the knowledge and consent of the guest author because it is considered a win-win situation. The famous guest usually does not meet authorship criteria. The scandalous recent case of bogusly cloned human embryos claimed by Huang Wu Suk of Korea and his longtime per partner, Gerald Chatton, rocked the scientific world. Unfortunately, the panel that the University of Pittsburgh convened to investigate Chatton cleared him of misconduct and concluded that all he did was misbehave. Whether you agree with this or not, the, fa the fact of the matter is that these two had a long history of collaboration including claiming to clone the world's first dog uh, here in the picture. Ghost authorship refers to professional paid writers who anonymously produce material that is then officially attributed to another author. This is often practiced in the pharmaceutical industry where ghosts write promotional and favorable studies for drugs and well-known persons, such as professors, scientists, or senior clinicians, are subsequently listed as authors. Often this is done with a consent, with their consent, and with more than adequate compensation. Very uh, famous examples include Redox, which um, actually paid Richard Atkinson 
1500 US dollars in exchange for putting his name on the finished piece. He was so happy with the ghostwriter's work that he wrote, let me congratulate you and your writer on an excellent and thorough review of literature, clearly written. Perhaps I can get you to write all my papers for me. A year later, the drug was pulled from the market as doctors began reporting heart valve injuries in as many as one third of patients taking the drug. There are many other drugs that were in a similar situation. A medical education company actually wrote articles supporting Neuron Kin for Park Davis uh, and $1,000 each was paid to friendly physicians and pharmacists to agree to offer these articles. So loft documents had been written that included 81 different articles promoting its usefulness for everything from panic order to pedophilia. And for some of the articles, the name of the author had still been, had still to be determined or was still to be determined. Vioxx was a deadly drug eventually blamed for over 60,000 deaths, but it was also linked to shameful scandals relating to ghost writers to boost sales. It involved the New England Journal of Medicine as well as the annals of internal medicine. Order of authorship is a source of unhappiness and dispute. Not all co-authors do their fair share of the work. Bibliographic listings name only the first one to three or six authors depending on citation format. This dilutes the value of publication for those who aren't listed first. Moreover, scholars with seniority may insist on listing their names first, even though more junior scholars did all the innovative thinking and research. Authors should be prepared to explain the order in which they are listed and justify each authorship. The rule of thumb is the one who contributed most is listed first. This should be a joint decision of all co-authors, ideally made at the start of the study and reviewed periodically. Hollywood solves the problem in a different way. In conclusion, authorship should be based on the four ICMJE authorship criteria. All persons designated as authors should qualify for authorship. All those who qualify for authorship should be so listed. Gift, guest, and ghost authorship should not be practiced by authors or tolerated by editors, reviewers, and readers. And the order of authorship should reflect the true contributions of each author. Thank you very much for your kind attention and have a good morning.